Hello everyone, it's Danzy. As per usual, this video contains critical analysis. If this is something you dislike, then that's cool. But a warning that this video might not be for you, and I encourage you to check out my other content instead. Also, because this episode only checked in with two major storylines instead of the usual five or six, I've decided to forego categories this week. What I did and didn't like will still be outlined clearly, but to put an overarching label of good or bad on scenes this long and involved just didn't work for me because there's too many pros and cons to explore. So without holding you back any longer, here's my take on episode 9. Probably unsurprisingly, I thought the scenes in Marine were definitely the weaker part of this episode. I don't know about you guys, but I sure am glad that Daenerys just dragoned her problems away instead of actually doing something based on her character's merit. And unbelievably, they really are just rolling with Daenerys' sudden and unexplained control over her dragons, like it wasn't a huge plot point last season. I wanted to get on board with this. I really, really did, because things like the opening shot and the dragons looked amazing, but I can't help but feel like all of this was unearned in terms of Daenerys' character development. She hasn't had to work for anything this season. Every situation she's been in, from learning to tame her dragons, to gaining leadership of the Dothraki, to immediately taking back her city, has come instantly to her with little to no obstacles. Even a fleet of ships to Westeros just fell in her lap without her having to make any real compromises. I get that the writers really want to sell her as a badass, they always have, but characters that instantly get what they want aren't relatable or interesting. We really needed some scenes of her achieving something without the plot just handing it to her for this to feel like a hard-fought win. From a technical standpoint, I'm hard-pressed for criticism that isn't just tiny nitpicks. The special effects and stunt work were outstanding, shots were framed beautifully, the sound editing packed punch after punch, and the makeup and sets looked gritty. This felt like a battle, and I don't mean one filled with inspirational speeches and the wind blowing through the hero's hair as he claims his victory. No, this felt like what a war zone should feel like. Suffocating, cold, dirty, bloody, tragic, frantic, horrific. Visually, everything got across very, very well. And what's even better is that there was no over-reliance on gimmicks. So yeah, in terms of art direction, I would give this a 9 out of 10. The story and dialogue, on the other hand, I would give about a 4 out of 10. In terms of scripting, we've seen this battle a hundred times across all forms of media. The protagonists fight to their last dying breath, and just when things are at their most hopeless, along comes party C to save them. In fact, this very show has already done this. Twice. And that's not the only cliché it touches on. This is a very standard good versus evil conflict, with none of the moral ambiguity in its opposing sides like Blackwater or the Battle of the Wall. A lot of choices they made before and after the battle didn't make a great deal of sense either. First of all, guys, it really sucks that your brother is dead. In fact, it sucks a lot. If only you had someone on your side with the ability to, you know, bring people back to life. I mean, I'm obviously not suggesting that the story should actually bring Rickon back, but every character who knew she had this power came off like a colossal dumbass for not even inquiring about it. Also, Davos finding the remnants of Shireen's pyre right outside of Winterfell. L let's talk about that for a minute. This means that last season Stannis not only burned his daughter over bad weather, but did so when he was a couple hundred meters away from Winterfell. Let that sink in, everyone. Let that sink in. And Sansa, come on, at this point, why are you not telling Jon that the Vale could be on its way? You're throwing away countless lives for no reason. By some miracle, Ramsay didn't know that you were amassing this army, so why not wait it out a few more days? Like, this isn't the Battle of Helm's Deep where you're forced to fight back the enemy until Gandalf comes and bails your ass out. You could have just not engaged until you had backup, especially if the attitude you're taking is that Rickon is marked for death either way. A really worrying point about the writing of this whole thing was that it didn't need to go down the way it did at all. It's kinda bad when you have to enforce made-up urgency and drama on the climax of your season. The final thing I want to touch on is the ending. I'm not against Sansa taking revenge against Ramsay on principle. I think it's a valid and justified end for him in terms of the show setting. But smirking as she walked away? I think this is a terrible note to end her story with Ramsay on. Starks don't take pleasure in executions, it's one of their defining principles. 
There's a lot of fantastic parallels between Sansa and her father, and a solemn expression would have spoken volumes about her asserting how she's the stark leader the North needs right now. This was framed very much in the light of, well, look at her, she sure got the last laugh. But if Sansa thinks to his level of enjoying cruelty, then in my mind, Ramsay's absolutely won. He's broken one of the few characters in the story whose whole narrative revolves around not being broken by cruelty. The moment Sansa becomes jaded and petty is the moment she becomes, well, Cersei when you think about it. At the end of the day, this was the writer's revenge fantasy, not Sansa's justice. This was probably one of the most cinematic and visually pleasing episodes the show has ever had, but there was a disappointing dissonance between the subpar writing and the outstanding effort put forth by the technical teams. It's sort of like watching a master artist spend months painting a bowl of fruit. Beautifully done, but not exactly well thought out or groundbreaking subject matter. I'd say it was still the best episode of the season despite its faults, but let me know in the comments what you guys thought. Be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys soon for the season finale. Take care.